Okay, I know this is cheesy, but anyway, I am making some panels for my own use. They're not great. These are just uh, quick and dirty. You guys saw the light panel from the last video. I added a, a quasi autopilot panel. I'm not doing anything fancy right now. I'm just still learning this stuff. So I 3D printed a piece of plastic, basically. So I have three rotaries and two more switches. I'm still coming off of the same uh, Pro Micro, all right? So I've used almost every pin. I got two pins left, but I'm um, not going to worry about those right now. So I got it uh, pretty much a... A rat's nest in the back so I got the three encoders all right um, there's tons of videos on how to how to wire all this stuff up um, bits and droids does a good job uh, but a lot of the work I got done I got from my son um, but anyway like I said tons of videos out there for uh, how to wire encoders, rotor encoders, and switches. Switches are extremely easy. Um, but anyway, the cool thing is um, I found an application most, a lot of you guys might know. This is Moby Flight. And uh, uh, Captain Bob has a video, a, a YouTube channel and he explains it really well plus you can go to Moby Flight uh, website and look at their tutorials as well um, but Moby Flight takes out all of the programming basically you uh, plug in your Pro, Pro Micro card or whatever Arduino that you have uh, and flash it with the firmware and then it will recognize it in the program as a module and then you basically uh, go in and um, set up your module and here I have my Pro Micro and I've added devices such as buttons and rotary encoders and then basically go in and add an item and then hit you know your basically this edit button and then you basically I'm just using events Microsoft Flight Simulator events and I just uh, select the event I want attached to each each one so I mean it's if I can do this anybody can do it believe me but anyway, so here I'm in the sim, and I'm sorry I'm doing this on my my smartphone. But anyway, go into the sim just to show you. Now I started. I I'm in the sim. Uh, I'm powered up. I'm I'm at a uh, a runway. The airplane's po uh, powered up. So I wanted to make sure that I had all my switches in the position that it would when when you come in and you're not cold and dark. Now if I'm cold and dark, all my switches would be off. And then I'd use the procedures to for startup and all that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to go in to the sim and be up and running. Okay. So the only lights that are off are obviously the uh, taxi lights. Oops, I did that again. Yeah, no, I had them. I ha no, no, that's right. I turned the taxi lights on. Sorry. Okay, so my switches are working. And so the landing lights are in the on position. So if I turn those off, they go off. And the beacon and nav lights and strobe and stuff like that too. But... Uh, I did the buttons a long, uh, few days ago, and I wanted to concentrate on the um, autopilot. So now I have a, a, an encoder for altitude, 
heading indicated airspeed and then each one has a push button as well for doing your holds your holds okay and then I got a flight director switch and I got an autopilot switch so if we go over here to the sim let's see here there we go so the flight director switch is in the on position since I started the airplane on a runway um, but I can now it's in sync with my buttons I can turn my flight director off turn it on okay and then for the rotaries so here we have the altitude rotary encoder so I give that a turn to the left or the right and that changes now it's an altitude it's an altitude hold so it's going to change to my current altitude which is 900 but if I press the alt key the ultra the um, altitude rotary it will hold your current altitude and then same with uh, heading left and right and then I have a hold so that's going to change to my current heading which 278 and then I also have have the uh, IAS airspeed and so I can turn that now so now I don't have to hover over with my mouse and use my scroll wheel now I have tactile rotary switches which is this is just for me I'm not making this big old fancy thing so anyway so if you guys want to get into this you know pick up a uh, uh, Arduino um, I was given these uh, pro micros from my son for Christmas and then he got me some switches and some uh, potentiometers and I went ahead and bought some rotary encoders and so these switches are inexpensive you know I think a pack of 10 costs like uh, eight, not eight bucks the rotary encoders for eight of these cost me twelve dollars so and then uh, 24 gauge wire all that kind of stuff and then uh, learn all your pinouts for your pro controller and then I started using C using the um, Arduino IDE to do some programming based off bits and droid stuff but then I was uh, I was uh, introduced to Moby Flight and it takes all the programming out. Um, so if you guys want to create your own uh, co cheap cockpits, this is the best way to go. Now, I'm 3D printing my panel boards, um, but I didn't set my 3D printer on any high quality print. I just wanted quick and dirties for now. But I uh, used my 3D printers to, um, to make my my panel faces and then I'm getting ready to make a box that these actually slide into uh, so it's nice and neat but yeah uh, I'm an amateur at my soldering and all that kind of stuff so, so this looks like a rat's nest but it actually works um, so this this quick and dirty cockpit probably cost maybe uh, 40 bucks you know, and Moby Flight is free. Uh, I do recommend donating it to them. They have a donation button because they make this is open source software available to you. And then this this panel works in any aircraft uh, that I that I have. So yeah, that's a quick and dirty look at uh, a cheap. Uh, tactile cockpit instrument stuff all right we'll see you guys later any questions comments put them in the field see you later